Hello everyone, Matt Anderson here. We're talking about uh, Learning Glass today. Specifically, we're talking about the uh, tabletop version of Learning Glass. And I'm gonna talk at you for about 15 minutes and then we'll have uh, 15 minutes of Q&A. And uh, you can share questions uh, via any of the Q&A uh, button down at the bottom of Zoom. So hopefully everybody's uh, out there hearing me okay. Uh, we are going to uh, record all of this, so we'll make sure it's available. Eric, we're recording everything? Yep. Okay. I have uh, Eric and Sherry in the room with me, so we'll uh, field questions and answers as we go. Okay. Uh, so somebody's already chatting in from Francine. Hi, Francine. Can't see Lear or GL or Tab. Okay. So uh, on your Zoom window, if you resize your Zoom window, it should pull up the whole uh, window, but I'll just try to keep it a little bit narrow, narrower in here. So if I write it right here, now you can probably see it. Okay. Cool. So, welcome everybody. Uh, this is our third webinar. We're talking about the tabletop version of Learning Glass today, which is what I'm using uh, right now. And we're going to talk a little bit right here, and then we're going to zoom out, turn on the room lights, and, and show you everything that's going on. The first thing you'll notice uh, with the tabletop, obviously, is the size. I appear a lot bigger relative to the size of the glass compared to our full-size 60-inch version, which we've talked on uh, at, in previous webinars. Now, this is not necessarily a problem because it sort of adds a personal touch, right? You're really close to me. You can see my eyes very clearly. You can see all my facial expressions very clearly. So it's a little bit different feel than the, the full-size learning glass, but it's a little bit more intimate. Um, the 30-inch is actually not such a bad size for uh, doing lectures on or virtual office hours or anything like that, as long as you remember that you don't want to write too big. So if I think that this is really a chalkboard and I have to write such that my students in the back of the room can see it, all of a sudden I'm gonna run out of room very quickly. But it doesn't need to be that big. I mean, that is really big on your screen. The important thing to remember about Learning Glass is it always scales to the size of the laptop screen. So even if I write something pretty small, you can probably read that just fine. So in some sense, the 30 inch, you still have plenty of acreage to do your derivations as long as you remember to write small. Okay? All right. Um, I use this 30-inch uh, learning glass in my classroom quite a bit, and I wanted to share a picture of that with you. Let me see if I can uh, share the screen. Um, if you guys have uh, chats, uh, comments as we go, just type them in on the chat room. Um, let's see, Molly says, can you outline your setup for feeding into the Zoom platform quickly? Yep, we'll do that in a second. Uh, what size tabletop monitor are you using now? We'll show you that in just one second, too. Uh, so one of the sort of cool features of this is being able to use it in a different setting, such as a classroom setting. So let me share my screen with you real quick, and I'll show you what it looks like in my classroom. So I teach at uh, San Diego State. I teach physics. And here I am. Uh, this is actually one of my students working on it. But here it is in the... Uh, classroom setting. This is a 500 seat auditorium setting and if you look down at the front I'll zoom in here a little bit. There's my student working behind the glass and on the other side of the glass of course I have the video camera which plugs into the HDMI system in this room and then it projects up onto the big screen. And in this particular room we have three screens, the middle one which can be separate from the outside ones, and so it allows you to set up a homework problem on the middle, put the student on the outside, and this student is doing a demo of how to solve this problem. 
And what you'll notice is even from the back of the room, you can see his face very clearly. You can see all the writing really clearly. Everything is crystal clear from the back of the room, which is important. And you'll also notice that in this situation, we don't even have a backdrop behind the student. You don't need a backdrop as long as there's not a white wall right behind the student, because then that would light up quite a bit. So that's kind of a, a cool feature of this. The other thing that I do with the tabletop is we do virtual office hours. So I'm currently teaching a uh, physics course in uh, Georgia right now, the country of Georgia. And I do virtual office hours with this sort of setup. And uh, I talk back and forth to my students, and I show them how to do physics problems as we go. All right, so I think we should turn on the lights and look at the setup here because that's probably more interest to people. I could talk about you know, physics and other stuff all day, but you guys would get really bored. So let's show you the setup. Eric is standing over there on the other side. Uh, he's going to uh, disconnect the um, video camera from the tripod, and we're just going to do a handheld setup. So he'll zoom out, and he'll show you exactly how I have it set up right here in front of me. I actually have my laptop sitting right underneath the 30-inch screen. And you can see my laptop right here. Okay. If you put a uh, polarizer on your camera, you can avoid any reflections off of your laptop screen. And so it's a, way, it's a great way to just have this complete station right in front of you that you can now zoom out to whoever you like. Um, as Eric is doing that, I'll talk a little bit about the lighting. We have uh, these power lights right here that I use on either side of me. Uh, these are you know, high power uh, photographic quality LED lights and uh, they just run off of batteries and I put them on either side of the 30 inch glass and that illuminates me. Okay, so now there goes Eric. He's going to zoom out a little bit. Can you back out a little bit, Eric, and maybe we'll show him the whole, the whole setup here. Okay, so Eric is zooming out, and you can see the glass right here in front of me. You can see the two tower lights. There's one here. There's one there. Okay, and those tower lights are really just to illuminate me. Uh, these are very nice because they are bicolor, so you can do uh, different temperature of uh, illumination and you can dim them uh, quite a bit. I think we're losing the HDMI feed there. Right. Okay. Is it better? And then the, the whole thing is just sitting on a desk. And then on the desk I have my computer, which is right here. So this is how I'm talking to you guys. I plug into the computer uh, from the video camera using a uh, Blackmagic Ultra Studio mini, mini recorder. And this is just a converter box that takes HDMI in and Thunderbolt out, and that goes straight to the computer. And now that camera is acting as my webcam. I could, of course, use the webcam on the um, computer, but it's a little bit too close to the glass the way I have it set up to really capture the whole glass. Okay, so that is the setup. Um, the desk is nothing special. This happens to be one of our electric lift up desks, but any desk that, uh, that you have available will work, any tabletop. The one thing that you might want to do is adjust the height of your chair just to get your face centered in the glass, right? If I sit up too high, I tend to cut off or too low. It's a little bit annoying. Um, the other thing that you'll notice is if Eric comes in very close with the camera, and then do a wide out. Yeah. Okay. So now my head relative to the glass sides, can you back up just a little bit so we frame the whole glass? Here's the frame of the glass. My head relative to the glass sides is pretty small. But if Eric goes back a bunch with the camera, and now he zooms in to reframe it on the glass, now you see that it's tricky to do that with it in reverse. It's, it's, it's reverse, so it's very <laughs> it's tricky reverse. to do. Okay, back out a little bit more. No, no, just zoom out a little bit more. Oh. Okay, a little bit more. Okay, so now the, my head relative to the glass side size is quite a bit bigger. All right, so this is just the wide angle versus zoom issue. 
So a 30 inch glass is actually plenty big as long as you bring the camera in close and do a wide angle and then your head size relative to the glass size is small. Okay. Um, all right, so let's, uh, let's chat with these people and see what other questions they have going here. Um, so Carol asked, how far is the glass from you? So the glass from me is about probably, I don't know what this is, 12 inches, 14 inches, something like that, yeah. right? I'm sitting pretty close to the glass. To 18. And then the glass to the camera is about 30 inches. So one sort of metric that we use is the width of the glass, make the camera roughly that distance from the glass, 30 inch make the camera 30 inches from the glass. 60 inch, make the camera 60 inches from the glass. That's a good starting point. Um, okay, so what size tabletop monitor are you using now, Lori asks. If you're talking about the computer that I'm using, this is just a 15 inch uh, MacBook Pro. Um, there's no other monitor that I have going in the room for a confidence monitor. Um, okay, so Molly asked about the setup for feeding into the Zoom platform quickly. So that was what we just showed you. Camera HDMI out goes into this converter box, the Ultra Studio Mini, Mini Recorder. There's lots of other ones that you can use, of course. And then that just feeds directly into the computer, which then acts as the, the webcam. Uh, I am actually using the um, audio through the computer. So I'm using the internal mic on the laptop right now. That seems to work a little bit better for us. All right, Bill says, can you talk about lighting? So lighting for this device is really simple. It's two on the side. That's it. Okay. So you can see what it looks like if I turn these lights off. Let me turn the lights off, right? I get pretty dark. If I turn them on, now I'm illuminated. So there's a balance between the lights on the lecturer, the lights on the glass, and the exposure of the camera. Those are the three variables that you have to play with. And you want to just get the balance right. You don't want this to be too bright. You don't want these lights to be too bright or too dark. And so you just have to play with that. Um, Ella says, what kind of camera are you using? This is the Canon uh, camera HFG20. Uh, that we sell as, star as part of our package. Uh, it's a really nice camera because it has the scan reverse feature built into it. You can use another camera, of course, but you'll have to add another electronic component, which is a scan reverse feature. So they, they sell, uh, and we sell, little boxes that do, that do the horizontal flip uh, as well. But this camera is a nice one because it has that built into it. You can also get um, flipping software, so they, there's little apps that you can use um, that will do the horizontal flipping. For instance, there's one called Eyeglasses, uh, and it's a little app that sits on your computer which would also do the horizontal flipping. All right, somebody says, uh, looks like Bill says, do you avoid writing in front of your face? I try to avoid writing in front of my face. I'm not always successful. But when I'm doing physics lessons, right, this, I think, is really annoying. Okay. People don't like that. It doesn't really bother me very much, but I'm told from my wife that I should not do that. So I try to not do that. Right? I try to write in this quadrant over here, and then in this quadrant over here. Okay. So if you do the rule of thirds, that seems to be a good practice. The other thing that you'll notice is when I just did that erasing, I failed to erase everything. So you just want to take a quick visual and just make sure you get all the writing off. Because ten, students in particular tend to fixate on that a little bit. So do the rule of thirds. Left, you stay in the middle, right, and then if you keep this area clear for your face, I think it adds a little professionalism to it. Um, okay, can you please turn on the room lights so that we can see what it does to the camera? Absolutely, so this is now full room lights on, and as you can see, turn them off again, so that's off, and now on, that's on. So even in a well-lit room, you can still get a very decent looking image. You'll notice that you picked up a little bit more of glare off the glass on that side of the glass from the room, 
but it's really minor. And that is if you have strong lecture lights and you adjust your glass properly. So even in a well-lit room in an office, you can do it. But watch what happens again when I turn off these lecturer lights. Okay, now I get really dark. So this is probably not how you want to present your image. You probably want to present it like that. Uh, okay, Bill says, does a webcam work okay? Uh, I would say... A nice webcam does. <laughs> Eric says a nice webcam. Uh, the key feature in your webcam is you want you don't want too much of a fisheye, right? Webcams tend to be pretty fisheye, pretty wide angle, so you don't want that. Uh, and the other important point is you want to have some control over the exposure of the camera, right? If you have a nice webcam where you can actually control the aperture, then it works well. If you have a webcam that only functions on auto exposure, it tends to not work very well. It tends to blow out these letters and saturate the, the camera, and so all the colors start to look the same. So I would say uh, you might want to uh, look at a professional camera that you connect to your computer rather than trying to rely on a cheap webcam. Matt, why don't we talk about the, uh, the iPads used too? Yeah, so we're also, uh, we recently started exploring the use of iPads uh, as the camera or iPhones or any smartphone, of course, any tablet, um, as long as, it works fine as long as you have control over the exposure, okay? Which you do, of course, on the, on the iPad, right? If you tap on the image, you can adjust the exposure and that exposure will stay fixed throughout the duration of your shot. But you have to do that after you start uh, recording your video. If you do it before, it'll go back to auto exposure and you won't be very happy with the results, okay? All right, Francine, can you describe how the LEDs fit in the frame, which way they face to, the, to illuminate the glass, etc.? Yeah, so the, the LEDs are all in the edge here, and I don't know, can you zoom out a little bit? There, you can just see the remnants of them right there. So they sit inside the frame on the edge of the glass. This is special glass, of course, that is polished around the edges, and then the LED strip sits right in there, and then the frame covers it up, okay? So the LEDs are all the way around the edge. They are all internally lighting the glass, which is, of course, why this writing looks so crystal clear, but you can also just see that by putting your thumb on there, right? If I push my thumb real hard on the glass, it frustrates that total internal reflection and brings out the light out of the, out of the board. Um, yeah, okay, so I think I answered that question. Uh, Lori says, are you using standard whiteboard markers on the glass? No, these are not standard whiteboard markers. You have to use special markers uh, that have neon in the name. Okay, basically, this is going to look backwards to you guys, but this is, a, this is an Expo uh, neon marker, and it just has fluorescein in it for this one. Okay, there, there, you can see that. It's backwards. Oh, here, I'll switch it around. No, that doesn't work. Anything that says fluorescent, it has to have fluorescent material in there, and that's what makes it pop out. If you just take a regular dry erase marker and, and write on this, it doesn't work. You can't see it hardly at all. Okay, so it just has to be fluorescent. All right, Ella says, do the power lights come with the package through light glass? Yes, the, the lights, these tower lights, come with our studio package. So if you want a turnkey solution, you just order our studio package for the tabletop and those lights come with it. It's basically everything that you see here to get up and running other than the computer. You know, you got to plug in your own computer. Um, do you have a black background drop behind you? Is this required? We do in this case. You want to show them the backdrop? So we just have a black one back here. You can't really see it very well, but there's a black sheet uh, behind us. Uh, it certainly makes it better to have a dark backdrop behind you, but as you saw in that picture earlier, it's not a requirement, okay? If you are, as long as you're not directly in front of a white wall, the writing will still uh, uh, appear very clear, right? The, the whole goal is to get this writing here 
to basically have high contrast compared to the background. So you can see that if I instead have a black background, and instead I hold up a white sheet, right? Now you can't read this writing very well, okay? So this is the problem. You want something dark behind it to give a lot of contrast between the writing and the background. Okay. Uh, Molly says, I can, sit a bit, I can see a bit of Eric's reflection there in the glass. Do you tend to set up main camera? At any, he's waving to you, by the way. Eric says, <laughs> Do you tend to set up main camera at an angle? Also, is the camera you're using a new acquisition? I don't recall you mentioning this earlier. Um, this, is, uh, a, this is definitely a camera that we have been using for a while. I think when you were down here, we were uh, trying out the Black Magic. Uh, camera, uh, higher end 4K studio camera. The, this one that we're using right now is a, a 1080p for a regular. It's, it's more of a camera. consumer. Consumer. It's, it's called the prosumer level. Yeah. Right. It's not sort of the super high end. It's not the cheapo. It's right in the middle. Um, you might. Want we tend to not set up the camera at an angle. We tend to come straight on. Yeah. If um, we if we have it at an angle, let's see. You can, if I can do it at an angle, but it just it's a little bit awkward with the lecturer writing and then looking over this way. So, I mean, it just, it's your preference. Um, and it also depends on how much glare you're getting from that side of the glass. As long as you can get that side of the room pretty dark, you really won't see any glare. So right now we have the room lights off on that side and the camera's still straight on, but you can't see anybody over there even though there's people over on that side. All right. Um, Bill says, how about if you sit on one side instead of in the middle and using the remaining two-thirds as writing real estate? Absolutely. It's just a matter of style, right? So if I move over to one side, Eric, can you zoom back out a little bit? Yeah. Okay. Maybe zoom out just a little bit more. Got to use the old school the zoom. Frame. There you go. Perfect. That's fine. Okay. So now if I'm sitting over on one side, I have all this real estate over here. So anywhere from this one third, if I keep that for myself, I have this whole two thirds to write. And certainly with this tabletop size, you can write anywhere you like because it's only 30 inches, right? So you can reach to the whole glass. Remember the 30 inch glass is really about sitting down and talking to your audience. The 60 inch glass is about standing behind it and moving around. So it's a little bit different feature. It's sort of like theater on the 60 inch versus movies on the 30 inch, right? Your expressions here are going to be subtle and more controlled. You're not going to be doing these grand gestures because you're going to go out of frame. So on the 60 inch, you can, of course, move around, wave your arms a little bit more. This is much more subtle. Little squints and things like that that tell your audience, oh, I'm really concentrating on the physics that I'm doing right here. All right, let's see what else we got. Um, yeah, so the, okay, so quite a few people have asked about uh, this camera. This camera is, we think, we think a wonderful camera, but it's a little old and it's uh, actually uh, starting to uh, go out of production. Uh, by Canon, so we still have uh, a supply of them. If you want to get one of these, you can talk to us about it, uh, but know that it might be hard to get uh, that particular Canon camera retail for much longer. Okay, uh, let's see. Bill says, can you recommend a nice webcam, e.g. Logitech? Uh, not yet. We're going to do some testing on webcams, but we have not uh, tested them out to give you a proper recommendation. All right, Francine says, our campus is in Manhattan and space is at a premium. Could we set up a standard size office as a studio with this size light glass? What are the smallest room dimensions that would work comfortably? Sherry, have you heard that about Manhattan? That is this expensive in <laughs> Manhattan? Oh, no. I'm not familiar with that. But uh, um, yeah, you can you can set this up in a standard size office. I mean, you really probably need about you know a six by six foot space 
to make this work. You can do it very compact, which is one of the nice things. A nice closet um, might work too. Yeah, a closet. I mean, I <laughs> I had this thing in my garage for quite a while, right? You know, and so amidst all the other clutter in my garage, I had my little studio right there, and you know, it's uh, totally workable, so not a problem. Um, all right, let me click over here real quick to the Q&A and see. Uh, John says, do you use any special cleaning products on the glass? Uh, we typically will use just regular terry cloth rags to wipe it off uh, in between shoots. And then at the end of the week, we will use a foaming glass cleaner and a squeegee. So, you know, like anything, you get ink buildup on the glass and it's a little bit more annoying because it's transparent. Uh, at the end of the week. So you just take a foaming glass cleaner and you spray the whole thing, let it soak in for a few seconds, and then squeegee it off and that gets all that ink off of it. Um, with the, the rags in between shots, it's really not too much of a problem. So for instance, we have learning glass written right there, and if I erase this with the rag, you probably can't see anything. Okay? I can see a little bit of a remnant with my eye, but the camera really has a hard time picking up any of that. All right, Andy asks, can you explain the dimmer switch for the learning glass? Yeah, so let's put some writing back up here. Hey Matt, why don't you draw the circuit for the dimmer? Okay, <laughs> so Eric wants me to draw the circuit for the dimmer. Okay, so we have LEDs. Okay, coming in, which are illuminating the glass, but that LED has a circuit control on it, which has a dimmer in it. Okay, and that dimmer, in this case, is PWM, right, Eric? Correct. Pulse width modulation. So the dimmer actually uh, pulses the LEDs very rapidly, and if you change the duty cycle on the pulse, you change how much light is coming out. So this would be like a normal square wave, and if you go much dimmer, it keeps the same frequency, but it just turns the light on for much less amount of time. Okay, so this is bright, and this can, is dim. You can demo it a little bit with the camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here, let me, let me grab this dimmer, and we were just... It's pretty low right now, right? Yeah, I think it's pretty yeah, low right now. Let me, let me turn it down. Oop, this is the wrong more. way. So now I'm dimming it, that's all the way off, and if I touch the dimmer again, it'll go all the way bright. That's obviously too bright, we would like something in between, so we go about halfway. Okay, that's maybe a little too dark. And you can see the... Um, and you can see a little bit of the aliasing, right, as you go there. But you can fix that by changing shutter speed. Yeah, easily. so if you do see any of that aliasing like Eric just showed, you can adjust that with the shutter speed on the camera. It's just aliasing between the pulsing of the LEDs and the frame rate of the camera. And if you change the integration time on the camera by changing the shutter speed, then you can get rid of that. Um, maybe that was a little more information <laughs> than you yeah. needed. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, so uh, the dimmer, he says, the dimmer looks like an old iPod. It does. It's a little... It's a little device that's about this big. It does look like one of those old touch iPods. There's all sorts of different varieties of, of dimmers. This one is nice because it's just touch on, touch off, and then you hold it down to bright or darken. Okay. Um, all right. Have you, Andy also asked, have you ever projected an image onto the glass to write? Uh, yeah, in fact, we talked about that in the last webinar. So if you go back to our webpage and look under the resources tab, you can look at webinar number two. We talked about uh, image insertion, both digitally and projecting right onto the glass. We typically don't do that with the 30 inch, uh, with at least with the frosted glass approach, because it tends to take up a lot of space. So if you're going to do image insertion with the 30 inch, I would highly recommend doing digital image insertion, either with a video switcher or right in the computer. I think you're going to be happier with the result. It's 1030. Okay. 
Um, all right, so let's it, we're getting close to the end of this, but let's ask a, let's take a few more questions. Um, does the polarizing filter for the camera come with the package? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Does. Mm -hmm. um, can your session be saved for viewing asynchronously? Absolutely, of course. Uh, you know, it's just a regular uh, video camera, so you can, of course, record on the video camera. You can, of course, record onto your computer. You can record it in a variety of, of places. Um, let's go back to the chat room for a second and see what else we have. What would happen if someone used a standard whiteboard marker or a Sharpie on the glass? Don't use a Sharpie. <laughs> Sharpies are really hard to get back off the glass. So don't use a Sharpie. Standard whiteboard marker works fine, but it doesn't show up like this, right? I've seen a few people use uh, standard whiteboard markers as a cue for what they're gonna talk about next. So if you take like a black uh, whiteboard marker and write up here, you as the instructor can see that, but the camera really can't see it at all. So you can write little cheat sheet notes up on your glass using a, a standard dry erase, and uh, that's kind of a neat, a neat trick. Uh, let's see, 30 inch would be hard to have two people discussing, though for single it seems great. Yeah, it's a little tight for two people, I would say. Um, your daughter's used it, right? Yeah, yeah my, daughter's, my daughters have, have used it. Two students use it. Um, What's that? You know, so it, it it depends on what you're doing, right? If you put a head here and a head here, it kind of takes up the whole space. Um, but if they're small human beings, it works pretty well. Uh, Lori says, what are the different sizes to the learning glass? So we have the 30 inch right now, this is the tabletop. And we have the 60 inch, which is the full size that we showed in the last webinar. There's one that Eric is pointing at right there in our studio. Uh, we have at least one more size that's coming out soon, so look for that announcement when we uh, redo our website. Uh, Molly says, are you crushing the blacks at all in the live stream, Any do doing any sort of color contrast or exposure adjustment? No, everything's just built into the camera feed itself. We're not doing anything additional on top of it. And what's the frame rate you're at now? I think we're at 60, right? Uh, 60? We are at 30. Okay, we're at 30. All right, good. 30 hertz. Uh, Francine asked about the digital image insertion. Can you point at the video as you talk if it's digitally inserted? Yeah, so I would refer you back to our webinar from um, last month for that, but basically you can point at a digital image that's on the glass if you're looking at the confidence monitor. So the way I could do it here is in fact I could look at my computer monitor as my confidence monitor. But why don't you go back to the webinar uh, number two and email me if you have any questions about that. Okay, so I think that's about it for today. That's probably plenty. I hope you enjoyed the webinar. Uh, certainly if you have any questions, email me or Sherry and we'd be happy to chat with you anytime. And we'll be back here in another month or so with another webinar. Cheers. <laughs>